WNEM TV5 News starts right now with a breaking news alert. Well, obviously, it's a very active scene here. Still not that much information. We're told that at least one of the suspects actually worked for the schools here in the capacity as a bus driver. Now, police say that without the help of the television show, these kits may have remained untested. Well, police actually tell us they do have that person of interest in custody, and the state crime lab was actually out here processing the evidence and the scene over at the apartment complex. Nick. Well, yeah, Carrie, I'm just actually back from that scene where that drill is still ongoing. Officers still going through that abandoned school building. When getting onto a busy corridor like Interstate 75, be prepared to go a range of speed limits from 45 to 60 or even 70 miles per hour when there's no cones up. We've heard from prosecutors about the kind of charges that the Nick couple is facing tonight, but now a close friend of theirs is speaking out and wants us to know the truth. In our quest for one more detail, more answers about this case, we stopped by the Nick's Bristol Road home. How could a seemingly typical couple be accused of embezzlement and possibly more? No answer. But moments later, we bumped into a neighbor who says he's a longtime friend of the couple. Well, as far as I know them for five to, I think it was five to seven years, they've, they're really good people. He doesn't want to show his face or share his name, but the family's friend says he knows nothing about their open involvement on Facebook with a group known as Davison Militia. I don't know nothing about that. It's the first I heard of that, so I don't know. But, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. But what the Davison man does know is that despite the fact Sarah and Steve and Nick now sit in jail facing a slew of financial charges, they're not the friends he remembers. They're really good people. Uh, like around Christmas time, she'd make jams and stuff, uh, you know, from the, the season of growing the, the fruits and stuff, and she'd bring that down to me. Anytime I needed help on welding or something, Steve would always weld. We'd hang out and have a few beers and stuff. Other neighbors we spoke to say, except for the recent police activity, they never saw any militia materials or anything suspicious. I never saw them, actually. You know, so it was, you know, normal house. You just drive by, okay. You know. Now, we've tried to reach out to numerous agencies from the sheriff's office to federal officials to see if these charges are connected to their militia involvement, but so far, everyone is remaining pretty tight-lipped. Reporting live in Flint, Nick Lully, WNEM TV5. All right, thank you, Nick. And we know that you, only you know his life and what he is. They pray together. Amen. Ate together, and most importantly, remember the life that was Ken Gruno. Thank you for <laughs> supporting our family and it shows that you guys really did care about him. All the support we're getting right now is just amazing. Hundreds packed the hall behind me here in Otisville, so many that the organizers actually lost count of how many people showed up to support this family. It's nice to have this much of a community support. Um, this is not the way we wanted to bring him home, but he's home and he's going to be with all of us. The family is facing a mountain of bills for the months-long search for Gruno and now his burial. The proceeds from the silent auction and raffle held at today's event will go to help them overcome those expenses. Yeah, anything will help, you know, a dollar fifty cents will help them moving forward with whatever they need uh, as far as any bills that come in or, or anything like that. But Gruno's family says the hardest part will be not having their beloved Ken around for holidays or just some laughs. He was my best friend. We played jerkies every Thanksgiving and he made the worst food. He's my best friend and it's hard knowing that he's gone. A life that's gone too soon. Reporting in Otisville, Nick Lully, WNEM TV5. Well, Carrie, of course, Imagination Station empty and closed for good and residents here tell me they think the city made the right decision here. You know, we actually are from Saginaw. We were meeting some friends up here to play. Trying to make the most of the chilly sunshine, this Saginaw mother made the trip to Bay City's Imagination Station, a popular playscape, only to find this, a sign saying the playscape is closed. You know, I just got here and I noticed the keep, keep out sign, so I didn't know what that was about. City officials say the Imagination Station was built with wood, treated with something called chromated copper arsenate, a chemical process known to cause the wood to leave out toxic arsenic into the surrounding soil 
soil and possibly onto your kids' hands. In fact, tests done on the soil below this Bay City playground have already tested positive. We uh, became aware of other facilities having issues and problems with contamination or potential contamination. So we decided to get a soil test done, which we did. City manager Rick Finn says the move is the right one to make, despite no existing laws in place requiring the city to take such a drastic step. We could have chosen to leave it in. However, I think that in, in our minds, it's better to be proactive and, and to take what we believe is, is the right step. After the playground is taken out, crews will remove the top layer of soil underneath to ensure future activity there is safe. As for Julia Hoving, she's just glad the city is making such a bold move. And of course, that's great that they're educating the parents and not just letting them, you know, be exposed to that. Now the plan is to put a new playground here in its place. City commissioners will consider approving that funding in April, and the city manager tells me they are dedicated to building a safe and new playscape. Reporting live in Bay City, Nick Lully, WNEM TV5. All right, thank you, Nick.